let's read scriptures and from here I will pray for you how many of you are ready for prayers God bless you Amen. Genesis 37 from verse 13 Genesis 3 7 Genesis 37 verse 13 I won't spend more time. Uh, I'll be talking scriptures, write them down, and then it will help you a lot, and we will pray for you. Amen. Amen. Read from verse 13, Mama. Israel said to Joseph, mm -hmm. Are not your brothers pasturing the flock at Sikkim? Come, and I will send you to them. And he said, Here I am to obey you. Then Jacob said to him, Please go and see whether everything is all right with your brothers and all right with the flock. Then bring word back to me. So he sent him from Hebron Valley, and he went to seek him. Now a certain man found Joseph and saw that he was wandering around and had lost his way in the field. So the man asked him, what are you looking for? He said, I am looking for my brothers. Please tell me where they are pasturing our flocks. Then the man said, they were here, but they have moved on from this place. I heard them say, let us go to Dothan. So Joseph went after his brothers and found them at Dothan. Can I go forward? 18. And when they saw him from a distance, even before he came close to them, they plotted to kill him. They said to one another, Look, here comes the dreamer. Now then, came and let us kill him and throw him into one of the pits meaning cisterns, underground water storage. Then we will say to our father, a wild animal killed and devoured him, and we shall see what will become of his dreams. Now Reuben, the eldest, heard this and rescued him from their hands and said, let us not take his life. Reuben said to them, do not shed the blood, but instead throw him alive into the pit that is here in the wilderness. And do not lay a hand on him to kill him. He said this so, that he could rescue him from them and return him safely to his father. Now when Joseph reached his brothers, they stripped him of his tunic, the distinctive multicolored tunic, which is he was wearing. Then they took him and threw him into the pit. Now the pit was empty. There was no water in it. Then they sat down to eat their meal. When they looked up, they saw a caravan of Ishlamites coming from Gilead, east of Jordan, with their camels bearing ladanam resin and for perfumes and balms and mice, going on their way to carry their cargo down to Egypt. Judah said to his brothers, Who do we, what do we gain if we kill our brother and covet up his blood cup? Let us instead sell him to this Islamite and Midianites and not lay our hands on him because he is our brother and our flesh. So his brothers listened to him and agreed. Then as the Midianites and Islamites traders were passing by, the brothers pulled Joseph up and lifted him out of the pit and they sold him to the Islamites for 20 shekels of silver. And so they took Joseph as a captive into Egypt. Now Reuben, unaware of what had happened, returned to the pit and to his great alarm found that Joseph was not in the pit. So he tore his clothes in deep sorrow. Let's stop there. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for your word in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Uh, this morning when I was 
reading this scripture several times. There's something that I was learning a lot which I want to share with you. Temptations are there because of our destiny. Therefore, temptations are for our destinies. Tell about temptations. Temptations are for our destinies. Without test temptation, you are going nowhere. Without a temptation, it means there is no impact you can cause. I want us to look at the life of Joseph. He was sent by his parents. Joseph was sent by his parents. And he carried food for his elder brothers. But despite that, he was there for their food. They were ready to kill him. Because of his destinies. Always when he wake up, he tell them, what will happen in the future. He will tell them he saw someone like this and others bowing down. But all this, he spoke them in dreams of parables. You know, the time when they throw him down in the pit, I was thinking what was his prayer. Almost the prayer might be like God sent someone to save me. But he didn't know that what he was going through was taking him closer to where God was in the world. In other words, temptations determines also your destiny. If you know that you are facing challenge, it ah. might be a challenge that takes you to where ah. God wants you. To ah. be. The reason why many times we face temptations like of Joseph is because majority are not standing with you. If you can see what happened here, you will see that it was only Ruben who said, if we put him there, come, I will come on another way to live tomorrow. When Ruben went away, the will of God prevailed. I don't know if you're hearing me. Listen. 99% are not standing with you. And 1% is not even there. And you are facing what you are facing now. When there is no one who can help around in your temptations. It's a step closer to where God is taking you. If you want to be where God wants you to be. It's a step closer to where God wants you to be. Rely on him also. Alone, than anybody because those who want to help you will come back later but that challenge will take you closer when they took him out from the pit when they saw the Ishmaelites coming, you know he might have said Oh, something will happen here. The first thing that happened to him was slavery. You could see him being taken by the people he doesn't even know. His brother rejected him. 
he becomes slave to the Ishmaelites. You know what is the meaning of Ishmaelites? Remember that Ishmaelites are coming from Ishmael. Ishmael is a man who never got inheritance He was sent away. In other words, in the life of this man, Joseph, there was no hope. Even if he can work there, they, there was no, nothing called inheritance to find from I don't know if you are hearing that. Whatever you go through, it might be a step closer to where God wants you to be. That is why in James 1 verse 12, the Bible says you are tempted according to your desires. And you are all here having desires. I don't know if you are hearing me. Ask your neighbor, do you have something you desire? If God put a desire in your heart, a desire is a gift. That God place it in your heart. When God put that desire, Satan will bring temptations. Don't forget, look ahead. Look on what God put in your heart. It's not what you are facing presently. What God has said before you. You know, you remember the Bible says Jesus endured shame because of the joy that was said before you. Temptations will come your way. But it's for your destiny. If you read verse 12, read. Blessed he be spiritually prosperous favored uh -huh. by God is the man who is steadfast under trial and perseveres when temptation. For when he has passed the test and been approved, he will receive the victor's crown of life which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Can you read the first stanza of that verse? I want us to hear it. Read it, read it again. Blessed is the man who is steadfast under trial and persevere and perseveres when tempted. You hear that verse? It didn't say blessed when you don't have temptation. It says when you are steadfast under that trial, you are steadfast. Focused. You are being challenged, but you know what is in you. You are blessed. And there will be a time where you will be approved. In fact, you know, if you read that, read it again, Mama. Read that verse again. Blessed uh -huh. is the man who is steadfast under trial and perseveres when tempted. This person is steadfast and persevere. In other words, he's not stopping what he is doing. Listen, temptation is there to stop you. On what you are doing, is there. You are steadfast and you are persevering. Have you ever found that there are things you have stopped because you could not win. There are some business you will try to do, but because they are falling, you cannot do it. Because listen, listen. Whatever you start, whatever you think, whatever you do, you have to be challenged. Because it's going to take you where you are belonging. If not, you are going to rest and question why I'm facing all this. That perseverance, it takes you close. I don't know if you're hearing me. Joseph Persevere. Joseph Okondera. Think about what was in his mind when the Ishmaelites were with him. The Ishmaelites might have asked him this question. How do you know those people? He, said, he might have said they are my brothers. How come they saw you are evil? You, you, must, 
there might be some ways that might have destroyed him coming from the Ishmaelites containing his brothers and all these brothers wanted to kill him but when the Ishmaelites were taking him he was going closer to be the head not the tail I don't know if you hear hearing me if you won't face that temptation there is no time of approval God have to approve you from a certain position that will make you to forget Oh, you ran for it. I don't know if you are hearing me. Can you just look at the prayer of Jesus? This prayer, when I look at it, the, the lost prayer, most of the time I found that we don't understand it. Especially Matthew 6, verse 13. Matthew 6, 13. It says, Lead us not into temptation. Let us not. Jesus was praying that prayer. Can you just read that verse 13? It says what? Chapter 6, verse 13. Yes. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from evil. What is the meaning of that? Jesus was saying, when you pray this prayer, you say, God, let us not into temptation. Meaning, make us to realize our desires. Make us to understand what is our desire so that when we are challenged we will be able to say we know our desire. If not, our response will be evil. Can you just read that verse again? It says And do not lead us into temptation uh -huh. but deliver us from evil. You hear that? In other words, we need to know the consequences of the desires that we are displaced in our Deliver us from evil. Lead us not there. Lead us not there. Lead us to be aware. 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 Lead us to Otherwise, the consequences Otherwise, of the desire that God has placed in your heart can heart make you to get answers in the wrong way. You will find your own way of evil. You will try to solve your problems in an evil way as long as, as it is an answer as long as you won't mind the source. Most of the time when we are facing what we are facing because of the desire that God has placed in us we find a wrong way of finding solutions. So Jesus said sorry Lord, make us Morena. to understand the Kabe consequences of, of having, having this desire. Why? Because Why? thy is your kingdom. Is you who rule. If you're the one who rules, you open our eyes to when see where we are going. When we are challenged, we won't look at the challenge. When we are tempted, we won't look at the temptation. I don't know if you are hearing that. I somebody say, hey, do you know that your desire, it will never come until you are tempted. Look what happened to Jesus. After he was filled with the Holy Spirit. I mean, fear with the, he never went to the people. He went to be tempted. Because you will never be approved for the assignment. You have to be filled by temptation will come. If you talk about Holy Spirit without temptation, it might be evil spirit. I don't know if you are hearing me. So if you talk about Holy Spirit without temptation, it's an evil spirit. 
Jesus was filled. It's like I'm seeing him, you know, speaking in times of Ramadan. And now, you mo the moment when you are filled with, power, with Holy Spirit, you want to pray for people. Holy Spirit say, hey. You know, you won't fulfill this assignment until your flesh dies. Because the desire for you is to die. So before you are crucified, crucify yourself. I don't know if you are hearing that. Before you receive that, you need to understand that you must be disciplined. If you receive things without discipline, it's possible to affect yourself at all. Let me say that if you receive things without temptation, the precautions that you need to take first are the situations that you need to know you go through. If you understand, you'll go some situations because of that desire. Whatever come your way, you will still talk about that desire. And forget about what devil is doing. Tell about, I want to talk about what God is doing and what devil is doing. Because whatever devil is doing, it draws me closer to my temptation. That's why the Bible says, that's why Bible works for good. I don't know if you're hearing me. Look at this verse in Galatians 5 verse 17. Galata 5 17. You will see that the Bible says flesh lasted against the spirit so that you do the things you do not wish. Flesh lasted against the spirit so that you do things you don't wish. It's possible to lose focus. It is possible to lose focus. Are you hearing me? Because the flesh of God is desires. And the spirit of God is on desire. But the Mara. desire of the flesh is to find the desire that God has placed in your spirit. So it is possible to fight your life. That is why the Bible says in Matthew 16, I have spoken to you these things that you may have peace because in the world you will have tribulation. In the world you have tribulation. Cheer up. I have overcome the world. Cheer up. I have overcome the world. Now this one is Matthew, eh? Yes. I'm talking John. John. Yeah, John 16. John 16, verse 33. John 16. Verse 33. Verse 33. Read, read that verse. It's important for us, this verse. Uh -huh. It says, I have told you these things uh -huh. so that in me you may have perfect peace. My God. In the world you have tribulation and distress and suffering, but... Be courageous, be confident, be undaunting, be filled with joy. I have overcome the world. Mm. This, word, this verse is, you know, it makes me to reason it all the time. This verse. Yeah, Jesus never promised us a smooth road. Yeah. Did you hear the verse there? It says, our joy is in tribulation. Listen, our joy is not in better food, salad. Not best houses and whatever. It's it's tribulation. tribulation. Can you just read that verse again, Mama? I have told you these things so that in me you may have perfect peace. In the world, you have tribulation and distress and suffering. Stop there. In other words, when you are here in the world, 
tribulation, But when you are in the world, your your eyes are in Jesus, you have joy. In the world, tribulation. You know, here you could see that you can be a good Christian when things are tough. It is possible to lose God when things are working best for you. That's what, that's what this scripture is saying. It is possible that you can lose God when everything produced the best for you. You can be surprised you have the best but there will be tribulation. You know tribulation is not coming from God, it's coming from people. When the Bible talks about tribulation, it's people now. If you want to see people will trouble you, just be rich in the village. You know who mobile Just to be rich in the village. You'll be surprised you're a king. Everybody will be coming to tell you the problems. And then people will be thinking you enjoy life. Can't you are suffering? But but All of them will take their problems. When you are still sleeping, you hear a knock in the morning. When you are the same knock, you hear it in the middle of the night. You say, somebody is sick. Please, you want your car. You have to wake up. You are in the village. You are, you, you are rich. You want to be rich. Stay in the village. You understand this tribulation. I don't know if you're hearing me. So, same applies in the city. Your house has to look like a prison. Your house has to look like a prison. Because in the city, they have to find a way to enter your house. They will be able to ask you. There's, there's no comfort. That we can talk about it. Today, today when you walk, when you meet people, you check if they are looking somehow to you. are in the city. But Jesus here was talking about Christians. You Christians. The only source of your joy is me. If you face tribulation, when people do whatever they can do to you, take your eyes on me. Your challenge, I'm the only one who can solve it. Cheer up. Because I've overcome this one. So the problems that we are going through will always take us to where we are going. I'm happy about your challenge. You've got the only one hope is Jesus. Take your eyes to Jesus. Don't look at that trouble. Let me show you another scripture before we close. Ask somebody, what are you facing now? And the person say what? Let's read James 1, 2. Jacob 1. What are you facing? Let's read James 1, 2. This one is tough. This one. James 1. Jacob 1. Verse 2. Verse 2. Consider it nothing but joy, my brothers and sisters. Uh -huh. Whenever you fall into various trials, be assured that the testing of your faith through experience produces endurance, leading to spiritual maturity and inner peace. Okay, so let's, let's listen to that verse. There is no maturity in the Lord except you are able to endure. Oh, 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 oh
is not to know the whole Bible. But to be able to endure. Must be able to endure. Carry on. I want to give you an example by three people here. Three people come forward. Three people. Can you just get one person here in the center here? Come. Come here, Mama. You face it. Her maturity is determined by the response to the challenges and tribulations you will bring. If you don't have this people here, we won't know how far you are fit for this position. I want to, to, to look at this one. This lady, she she's supposed to be here. Can you see that? This is where God destined her to be here. And God has to make him mature. But there is something it, it does in it. He gives her a desire. Are you hearing me? And this desire. Devil is the tempter. Satan He used people. You people are used by devil. So what these people will do. Can you say Jesus? Let's say Jesus. Jesus. So the same Jesus. Jesus, you say. Must be the same Jesus you say when you meet this one. It must be the same Jesus you say when you meet this one. That's where you will reach here. Okay, look what happened. All right, let's take she wants to marry. We are just giving an example there. She's married. She's married. Okay, look at this man. He's also married. This is the brother. Can you just come stand together like this? You stand together here. You too. She wants to marry this brother. And God wants to give her this brother. What will happen is. There will be this brother and this one who have to tempt her on the road so that she must not reach there. I don't know if you hear me. Okay, when you go there, promise her a car, a house. you promise her that you do a wedding in the moon. In the moon. You. you will do, I'll give you a mic. So you, you, you say Jesus. Hello, sister. I want to marry you and I will I will buy you a car, like a, any car, any sports car you like, big house. You will be the queen of Santin, you know. Jesus. <laughs> Hi, sister. Will you marry me? I will give you a big wedding in the moon. I will do everything. I will give you money, everything that you need if you marry me. Jesus! <laughs> Listen, stand here. The more you still stand with Jesus, you are clearing your way. You are clearing your way. Your eyes will be enlightened. You will be able to see who is your husband. Go and see that. In fact, what I want to tell you is temptations. Temptations when they come your way. They are here to close your eyes. So that you won't see the desire that has been set before you. They have to come part-time things. Temporal. Temporal blessings. Temporal houses. Temporal promises. Close your eyes.
will be matured and able to see where God is taking you. I see where God is taking you. Don't settle for the less. Don't settle for the less. Don't, don't worry about what you are going through. Don't surrender and retreat. Don't retreat and surrender. There is still big things ahead. There is still big assignments ahead. There is still big victory ahead. You know, today I was hearing something about you. about my, my I mean my, my wife was speaking something to me. I had I just had faith makes you to see things ahead without worrying about the present. When my son in law enters the church, I call him. He said the same thing to me. I was telling him something. He said this, 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 the same thing that I want to tell you. We cannot be determined by what we are seeing. Because we still have life there. We are not dying now. So we cannot be having a afraid of death now. Because we can see our lives there. I don't know if you are hearing me. Listen to this. Temptation brings doubt when you are defeated. The reason why you are doubting, you were tempted and you fail to prevail. Doubt occupies you. And when doubt is in your heart, you can't receive anything from God. I'm here to tell you, whatever you are going through, today, 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 it is the last day for that thing to torment you. To torment you, you will overcome in the name of Jesus. Can I tell you this? The devil is telling you, it's over with you. I'm here to tell you, it's not over. It's not over. You're going somewhere. It's not over. You cannot be intimidated by Satan. Listen, he's doing all this to you because of the destiny. Don't look where you are. Remember Ruth. I'm going with this woman. There is no hope in here. But I've got hope in a God. I'm seeing where I'm going. I'm going with this woman. I'm not turning back. Because my husband died. I'm going with her. Because I've seen God in her life. Ruth said, you are your God. Will be my God. Where you will turn is where I will turn. This is the time of not looking at the temptation. I'm going with my God. I'm going with my God. I'm not alone. I'm going with my God. I'm walking with Him. I cannot. In, be intimidated. I cannot be afraid because the destiny has been placed in front of me. I might be seeing troubles, but I'm going somewhere. I might be facing temptation, but I'm going somewhere. Check some of the hair. I'm seeing my desires. I'm seeing where I'm going. No one can stop me. Listen, there's a difference between Jesus being filled with the Holy Spirit when he goes to be tempted. But when the Bible says when he came back, he was filled with the Holy Spirit and power. There's a difference. He was filled with the Holy Spirit. There's some people who are filled with the Holy Spirit without power. When Jesus turned back, 
You must read the scripture. Sit down. You look, you look a, a suspect when you stand. You look a suspect. Did you read the scripture of Matthew 4? When Jesus came back. Let's read the scripture. Because when you are not tempted and overcome, you are powerless. Are you listening? Are you listening? Are you there? Did you read there? Verse. Read from verse 1. You see how Jesus was tempted. <sighs> then Jesus was led by the Holy Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. After he had gone without food for 40 days and 40 nights, he became hungry. And the tempter came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command that these stones become bread. But Jesus replied, It is written and forever remains written. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by the word that comes out of the mouth of God. Then the devil took him into the holy city of Jerusalem and placed him on a pinnacle, highest point of the temple. And he said mockingly to him, If you are the son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you to serve, care for you, protect, and watch over you. Okay, and okay stop there. Jesus here yeah, was Jesus. led by the Holy Spirit. Yeah. But read Luke 4 also. Verse 1. Luke 4, 1. Now Jesus, full and in perfect communication with the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit in the wilderness mm. for 40 days being tempted by the devil. Okay. And he ate nothing during those days. Listen here, Jesus was full with the Holy Spirit. Read verse 14. 14. Uh, verse 14. Uh, then Jesus went back to Galilee in the power of the Spirit. And the news about him spread. Can you hear that? Jesus now, he went back in the power. Kamata. Of the spirit. He was full of the spirit. He went back now. With the power. Of the spirit of God. Without temptation. Without tempted. You are powerless. If everything is running smooth. And you are doing God's work. If everything is running smooth. And you are doing God's work. It might be telling us that your journey is very short. Your blessings are very small. We range you by what you go through. Whatever you are going through must tell us who are you and whom do you represent. Today, after this service, when you go back, can you just read Amplified Bible on verse 14? Some of you have got nothing but the respect of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I want to stop this. It's Amplified that I'm reading. Then so, Jesus went back okay, to read Galilee. King, yeah, read King James Version. 
Then Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit to uh -huh. Galilee. Uh -huh. And the news of him went out through all the surrounding region. News is fame. News. You make news because of power. Mm -hmm. he, he came back. Avoya. After being tempted, power of the spirit. When demons look at him, say, "Hey!" Because there was power of the spirit. And the people around say, "Because what is happening with him?" And the news went everywhere. You can make the news by the power of the spirit. Don't go down when you are trying to do something. When Satan challenge you to Satan stop. Challenge you Carry on really. doing it. This is a season that God has and placed. And this is a season for you. People have to know your People name. People have to know you. The fame is coming your way. Fame is coming your way. Jesus was famous. Jesus was famous. Can you hear the verse? They say, if, if, if we read American Standard Vision, just read Standard Vision. I just want to talk about famous now before we close. So that when people begin to know you, don't say, hey, mm -hmm. when you start to buy a big car, mm -hmm. you know, don't associate that car and say, oh, this is... you know, okay, just read verse 14. Then Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit uh -huh. into Galilee. Uh -huh. And a fame went out concerning him and a fame. through all the region round about. Jesus was famous. Jesus was famous. Don't make yourself famous. Jesus, through the power, Jesus was famous. <laughs> you will do business, you find the whole South Africa knows it. You will be called, you find that the anointing in you will make you famous. Let this thing happen. You can overcome what you're going through. It must return with power of the Spirit of God. With power of the Spirit of God. Holy Spirit of God, power. Power. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you.